Morning, everybody. I'm uh, coming to you today to talk a little bit about science for Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday this week. So this will be your last science video you watch for me. Uh, hopefully you had a good time just getting into the forms and submitting the quizzes. That was our Monday work. Uh, hopefully there no too many big problems there. It didn't take you too long, so off to an easy start for your Monday. Uh, what I'm going to look at today is just a quick little preview. We're going to do things a little different with science. We can tie in with our reading goals with Hatchet. And I believe you're also starting to work some work on Canada in your social studies class. So since we're studying ecosystems and food webs and all that good stuff, I thought we could tie that in as well and do a little bit of a study with Canada on uh, how all that can work in the Canadian ecosystems of, of Canada. So uh, what I'm going to look at today, we, okay, so you've already done this. If you're probably mostly watching this on Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we've got this Hatchet slash Canada project. Um, and I've got instructions here. I'm going to go through the instructions in the video here, and then uh, we'll also take a look at the website. The website's really neat and useful uh, and shouldn't be too many problems as far as using it, but I just want to kind of look at it for you. So here's this cross-curricular project with Hatchet in Canada. Uh, what we're going to do is study and investigate three Canadian ecosystems, and the site we're going to use is this one here. So you got this link. Um, we're going to look at, before we get into that, there's going to be three eco zones we'll investigate. In Canada, they call them eco zones as part of their Canadian government, just sort of breaking down the way that their geography works and the different uh, ecosystems they have. Uh, one is called the Boreal Shield. And this is the eco zone in which Hatchet takes place. So we're all going to investigate that one. Uh, that's sometimes called the Canadian Woods. Uh, sometimes it's called to certain parts are called the Taiga, T-A-I-G-A, -A, uh, that has longer winters, but also foresty areas. Uh, they call it the Boreal Shield in, um, in Canada. Okay, so we're going to look at that, or it's sometimes called the Boreal Forest. Uh, but that's the one we're going to look at. And then you'll have the choice after that of two other ones. So uh, as we go through and investigate those, there's a few things we're going to do here uh, with describing the environment. So what's the ecosystem like? We're going to choose a producer in that ecosystem and talk about adaptations and herbivore in the ecosystem and talk about the adaptations in a carnivore as well. And then we'll make a food web. So one important thing I created here is just this checklist. Now, this is obviously not, you're not going to type everything into here. This is just a checklist for you to use uh, to keep track of things as you're going through. So if you're able to do it and just edit it, you could put X's like if I do that. And then I'll go to the next one. Once I get that done, I'll do that or whatever. So use that as a tool. Uh, and then as far as recording your information, you can do it however you want. You can do it in if you have your science notebook, if you took that home from before we got onto this uh Remote learning time, you can use that. If you have just loose leaf paper you want to use or if you just want to do it on your computer, uh, that, that's great, okay? Um, so let's go ahead and check out this website. I'm going to show you the Boreal Shield uh, Eco Zone. Now, when you get to the website, uh, it's pretty neat. It's got It's all clicky and interactive, and this is a map of Canada, uh, and you can see all these different colors are the, are the different eco zones that they have, okay? Um, for the Boreal Shield, you can click up here. You can click anything in here on the colors here. You can click along the sides, or you can even look at the map and just click anywhere on the map, okay? So these are called the terrestrial eco zones, and terrestrial means land-based. So these are like the land areas of Canada and the different uh, eco zones that they have. And um, if you scroll down, another part of our project where you'll select is going to be a marine eco zone. So marine uh, refers to maritime, and mar marines means uh, referring to water. So you'll notice all the eco zones here are the ones like off the coast or the Hudson Bay eco zone, and these different ones there. Okay, so you'll be able to select one of these and also one of these of your choosing as far as the terrestrial eco zones. Uh, but we're all going to do the boreal shield, and then you'll pick one more land zone, and then again, one water zone. So uh, let's go ahead and look at the boreal shield. And it's in here, if you want to click it, this is like the Canadian woods area. So I think Brian leaves from New York, which is about right here. Uh, and then plane wreck happens along the way as he's going up this way. So somewhere in this zone, the Canadian forest, the Canadian woodlands, or again, what they call the boreal shield or the boreal forest is uh, where he goes. So I can click right on here. Again, you can click it up here if you want or over here on the side. Uh, any of these are all click clickable and usable. When I do that, it takes me to this really neat website uh, page here that I like a lot. Now, when you see this picture, the picture quality is not great, but it definitely does remind me of the book Hatchet. You see the forest, you see the animals, you see the waterways, and things like that. Um, 
just a real quick go over this page. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in it, okay? So there's there's a quick, most pages have a quick little preview. There's a few paragraphs and basic information about uh, what it's like. Um, then when you actually get into sort of researching and studying and learning about this ecosystem too, uh, you can also click up here. These are really useful up top, okay? So the landforms and climate, if we click on that, it takes us to this. Now, it, this is what, again, the picture quality here isn't super great. But what I really like about these pictures is that if I go take my cursor over here, it sort of turns into like an index or a guide. So if you see like number one, it says Canadian Shield Rock. It's just kind of just talking about the rocks that they have there. And then over here, we'll see, oh, yeah, here's number one. So that's where that is in the picture. If you go back off, you can see, okay, it's up kind of where above that wolf is. Uh, all these other things too. So these are the different sort of landforms and climate. Uh, and then here you can talk about the environment in here as well. So again, down at the bottom, just a few paragraphs of information. So you can just record, you know, basically what's it like there? What's the temperatures like? How much rain do they get? Uh, what kind of, you know, what kind of features of the landforms are there and different things like that, okay? So there's where you can describe the environment. Uh, then it goes wildlife and then plants. So I'm going to, in order to go in the order of what we've got as far as what we're researching here for our, our, uh, particular items in our checklist, producer adaptation. So producers are going to be our plants. Uh, if I go to the plant section, wow, there's a whole bunch of things here, okay? So there's a whole lot of things. And the neat thing is, uh, again, I can go over to the page here, to the picture, and if I bring my cursor over it, it turns into this index where I can see all these different things. So if I see, like, number, let's see, uh, how about moss, number 10? We all know what moss is, but where do I see number 10? Oh, down here, okay, so down here is where the moss is. If I go back off it, I can see, okay, there's moss. Again, the picture quality is not that great. It's kind of hard to see, but we can look at a few things in here, okay? So if you see a tree, like let's say this number 15, I want to see what is that. Well, that's white birch, okay? Well, now again, there's maybe not be a whole lot of information on the white birch here, but if I wanted to choose that as my producer I'm going to talk about, we can definitely uh, do a few things. If I highlight this and then right click, I can search Google for white birch. And then that might bring up a whole lot of information we can use and search for, maybe some pictures and images and all the things we can do to talk about the leaves, talk about the bark. You could say the bark protects it uh, from the weather. You could talk about the root systems that it would have to help it grow and things like that. And again, you can, of course, go to little nature pages and things um, like Britannica.com is an encyclopedia whatever you want to use, okay? So just do a little research on each, on the producers that you want to look at. Uh, and again, this might tell some features about the leaves and all that kind of stuff. And again, whatever you want to do. So we're all going to do this Boreal Shield ecosystem. So I'm going to kind of, again, go through this one for you. And then when you get to the wildlife, uh, we can go to that one. And it uses the same picture. But again, I can see, okay, let's see, number six, that's a wolf. Okay, wolf, easy, right? Wolf, we can go to number five is a blue jay. Where's that in our picture? Oh, five over here. So again, it might be kind of hard to see in the picture itself, but you can maybe see that little bit of blue right here when we go off of that, okay? So again, this is meant for us to help and see a lot of uh, good information. Now, let's say the moose, moose number 10. Where's the moose in the picture? Uh, oh, he's like way in the back. I guess we can't really see him too much, but this gives us a nice list of the different types of animals we would have uh, in this area. So our moose would be an herbivore. And again, I can highlight that and right click and find out some information about uh, all the different things in there and uh, some pictures and images and things like that. Now, certainly with the moose, they've got antlers to protect them. They've got the thick fur to protect them from the cold. Uh, they've got their hooves that help maybe, you know, protect their feet when they walk around through the forest and things. Uh, lots of different things with that. Okay, so you're going to pick a... Uh, an herbivore there and then we've also got a carnivore which i think a lot of us will probably pick the wolf uh, as our carnivore for our project here uh, but again we can look through and see uh there might be bear oh here's the beavers uh striped skunk is usually a, a carnivore um let's see a lot of other ones too oh a broad-winged hawk number 22 which is going to be up here so again use this as a nice reference and then as far as like knowing what they look like and what physical adaptations they have then you might have to go ahead and you know do a little right click and search google uh for that okay so broad winged hawk here's some good images uh here's some good information we can find all about birds.org that sounds like a great site so again we're just going to look and see a few of the adaptations we can find for them um 
as we go through that, and then uh, we can find out lots of things. So it's, uh, your research will go a little bit beyond what's in the what's in the page here as far as being able to identify the adaptations. Uh, but this gives you a great list of all the different types of uh, plants and animals we can find in these areas. Okay, so uh, then when you get through there again, there's also more information here, just a few paragraphs uh, for those different things uh, if you want to use that as well. But let's let this be a good starting point for us as we go ahead and look through there and we can again talk about plants, we can talk about wildlife, we can talk about the environment and that should cover most of what you need to do in our checklist here. Okay, and again, you might have to go to a little bit of an extra step of research to find what kind of adaptations there are, but like we saw, it's just it can be just a quick little uh, Google search of those organisms you find when you find one you're interested. You know, obviously, definitely want to pick one that's fun, and that's the idea here is to have a little fun with uh, some of the learning we're doing. Um, so you'll do that for the boreal shield. We're all going to do that. Ecozone two and three is another an other land ecozone, and then a water one. So again, that's going to be totally up to you and your choice of what you want to do. Um, so if you go back here, you might you might think, oh, this is a neat name I'd like to research about, or uh, maybe I want to like go oh, up here. I can click up here, and again, that takes you to a thing that's all very similar to here's the Northern Arctic Zone. If you want to do that one, uh, this can tell you all kinds of stuff too. Again, wildlife. Uh, we can talk about again. You, all the pages used have that little thing where it turns to a index there, and then you can identify those. Uh, so same thing as we did the, for the boreal shield there is to go ahead and look through there and find. Uh, that so you'll have the another eco zone you can choose again you can do any other one of these everybody's going to do the boreal shield and then you can pick any of the other ones you like and search around find one that's cool or if there's a place that you think doesn't i just want to go with that one that's great um then the marine eco zones too same thing now these are more water based and i might say oh let me see what's over here on the west coast of canada uh, that's called the pacific marine eco zone makes sense because that's the pacific ocean but you're going to do the same thing okay so as far as describing the landforms or the climate this information again all these little paragraphs down below have some good information about the basics there plants wildlife animals all those different things so there's lots and lots of information here and again you might have to go a little bit beyond the website to actually find pictures that are a little more clear of each ecosystem or each uh, inhabitant of the ecosystems and be able to find those out, okay? So that's going to be the basics of the project there. Again, whatever you want to do for yours is uh, is fine. You can, however you want to record your information. Uh, you could even do it in paint. So if we had like our moose, we could do a moose picture, uh, copy the image, hit paint. We do our moose picture, and if you, again, if this is all up to you, so you're, you'll do a little bit of work to submit work to me you know, next week. But you can say uh, antlers for protection, or thick fur to stay warm. Okay, so things like that. Uh, nothing too major, just kind of taking the time to do a little research and share a little bit of information. Um, all that kind of stuff you can do, okay? Uh, again, you're going to do that. Again, make sure you use this checklist to make sure you hit all of these items, okay? Again, pick your own land eco zone, pick your own water eco zone. We're all going to do this boreal shield one because, again, that's where Hatchet takes place, where Brian has to survive and do all that stuff to, to make his way on his own independently in the, in the Canadian forest. Um, so that's the big things there. Okay, again, any way you want to record it, just take notes, draw pictures, draw sketches. Uh, if you want to do it on the computer, kind of like I did here, just a quick little thing for each one, that's fine. Uh, the other things you are going to do is make a food web uh, for that as well. And that's going to include, we could do probably our producer, herbivore, and carnivore all in a food chain, but our food web should include a lot of other things too. So again, when we go to our boreal shield, we have all this wildlife, all these different things. Doesn't have to include every single thing, but look through here and think, how could I integrate the uh, the boreal owl and the birds and the moose and the wolf? There's lots and lots of things. So remember, food webs all intertwine and show, show lots and lots and lots of information, okay? So keep an eye out for that. Um, Hope you enjoy it. Again, I would probably say this is our next three days of science. So I'd say, you know what, just pick one for each day and that'll take you through Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, okay? Uh, next week, what I'll do is I'll create a form kind of like what you did for your quizzes where we had the multiple choice thing, but it'll be more of an option where you can just type in some of the information. And I might just have a couple, have you share a couple of the other ones you did and talk about, you know, what, what was the producer you did, what were the adaptations. So just be ready for that uh, coming up next week, probably Monday. 
uh, where you'll just type in a quick little bit for, for, for that to share and show me uh, what you did, what you learned about, okay? Uh, other than that, this is kind of the project. So again, I would say each day, just pick one to do there and uh, have fun with it, okay? So hopefully, again, that helps you learn a little bit about Canada, helps to tie it in with some of the work you're doing in reading and social studies coming up, where you're going to be reading about geography in Canada and culture and all that good stuff. Uh, but for now, that's it. All right, thanks, guys. See you soon. Bye-bye.